Good evening, this is Bryce Ellis. I'm with the South Plains Wood Turners. I'm instructor for the beginner class at the Garden and Arts Center. We're going to um, have over the next five weeks. Tonight I want to do some basic cuts. I want to hopefully produce a honey dipper by the end of the video and we're going to practice some of the cuts, some of our basic cuts, uh, anchor bevel cut and what that is is we're going to anchor our tool to the tool rest. We're going to engage the bevel and then we're going to bring our tool the edge into the cut and so we've already gone through some safety issues hopefully in the the first part of the class so you're going to be you're going to get that and then you're going to sign a liability form on that so we're going to go right into the wood turning portion of the class uh, I've got a step center here. It's a drive center on the headstock, and I've got a revolving center here on the back side. We're going to put a piece of maple between centers. Tighten it up till we engage the teeth. We want to make sure that the, the flat, the center round is engaged and then our teeth are engaged on this side. Put our tool rest in about, I'm going to change and put a uh, tenon on this so we can go between on a chuck pretty quick. Full rest height, we want it to be about, if we look at the bottom of our flute, we want it to be at center. So when we start doing a cut, we're ankle, anchor our tool on the tool rest. We don't want to slide off this edge or off this edge, it'll smash fingers. So we're going to stay within this boundary line, imaginary fence of our tool rest, so call it, or that's what we're going to call it. I'm gonna bring this in, and then if you come in here, you can start a cut without having the lathe turned on, but this is what we're gonna be doing. So when I turn the lathe on and it's spinning, Slow it down a little bit. If I come in like this and I start my angle on my bevel, I'm not going to start a cut until I bring it down to the edge. Right now I'm using a spindle roughing gouge with turning between centers. And spindle profile orientation. And all that means is the grain is running along parallel to the bed of the lathe. So we're going to look, I've still got a little bit of square here. If I turn this on, 
and it's spinning and I put my tool on here it'll bounce a little bit where it hits those flat spots so if I'm gonna make one more pass You always want to listen to your lathe while you're cutting. It makes a different sound when I'm going across the flat edge versus when I'm going across the round too. So I can tell as it's chopping across right here, I can tell it's not round. But over here, I go across that that I've already turned. good enough for now all right the next thing I want to do is I'm gonna put uh, use a parting tool and make a tenon down on this end so I can use a chuck and alleviate between centers My parting tool is one eighth thick. This what we have diamond parting tools in the club that we will be using. This is a this is a diamond parting tool, but it doesn't have the the wide angles on this edge. It's just a flat. For our tenon, do the same thing. Anchor bevel. So this this cut edge is one eighth, and I want to get at least two thick. I'm a little bit wider than two thick on here, but I don't want to get three thick because I don't want to be three eighths deep on my chuck. The chuck will bottom out and will compromise our grip. The chuck I'm going to be using is a dovetail chuck, so I've got a little bit of a dovetail on here. It's not exactly 90 degrees going this way. But what I want to have is a 90 degree right here on this edge. shouldn't be too hard to knock those out and this back side comes out when we retrieve the pinion on our tailstock. I'm going to actually move it out of the way.
Actually, I need to go back and change that to a straight because my other chuck, the smaller chuck, is a straight. So all I'm going to do is alter my tin in here a little bit and make it straight. Hold this in tight and tighten up on both sides. Since I know I'm going to be working on this end, I'm going to cheat a little bit with my tool rest out off the end of the piece. The other tools that we use, we have these Thompson's travel kits. They're a 3 8 kit with a spindle gouge. This is the, the medium flute depth. They have a bowl gouge, 3 8 bowl gouge. This is the deep V groove uh, flute. And then a detail gouge, this is a real shallow flute. This ground out area here is our flute so on our first thing I want to do is use my parting tool and I'm going to make some some of these in class. These are uh, the Robert Sorby. They're 1 16th of an inch. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a bead. When we start out a bead, we point our finger down the flute on going to the right. And I'm going to, what I want to do is bring my tool up, but as I bring it up, I'm going to rotate it. just like this and I start in the center of the cut um, we do about three quarters of an inch one inch I did this a little shallower because we have smaller spindle gouges so a half of a 
that bead would probably turn out a little better. This one's going to be elongated. I did speed the lathe up a little bit to do more detail work. But we don't try to go all the time. But we start here, we anchor our tool, we find the bevel, and then when it starts to cut, now I'm starting to bring it up and rotate it. Now to bring in a secondary cut, I want to just bring it in there. And then to go the other way, I'm going to cheat with my finger on the side because I want to go this way and it's awkward for our fingers if we try to do like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat my finger over on the side, do the same thing. finish with the tool in the bottom. If we're doing a big round over, like say down here on this end, I may want to bring the tool around this way. If I do that, I want to scoop the tool rest a little bit that way. So. to make our full bead with one pass and we kind of clean it up. same way we do a cove, but we want to finish how we started our bead. So I'm going to start here and scoop to here now. So the motion is start out here on the edge and come in like this. can't do all of this at once. A little skate. starts right here and I'm going to cut to the center and scoop it out and on the other side and what I got here is a little bit of skate so we got to hold or give a good stop here basically I just use my left hand for holding the tool down on the tool rest and what we're going to do here is I'm a, I needed to hold it a little better here to keep it from skating back on me it's an unsupported cut because we're off the bevel where we start until we start that cut. Now we have the bevel in there and then we rotate into the cut. So I'm starting level and I'm finishing with the tool handle down and the point up. 
whereas we start here, we start with our handle down on a bead and we roll it and we bring the tool level. 